so it's ominous. Yeah, I wish you a lovely afternoon. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. And I would now like to focus on the use, uh, the potential of small modular reactors in the Czech Republic. My contribution is subdivided into several parts. First of all, I would like to focus on the plans of uh, the current Czech government and on the SMR program of the Czech company and uh, the project uh, in this context by Czech industry. And then I will uh, provide you with a personal comment uh, on the situation. Well, let's start with the plans of the current Czech government. Well, first of all, the Czech government uh, holds several uh, roles this year and has to perform several activities. It has to update several key documents on energy management and on climate protection. Plans for climate protection, uh, the Czech plan for energy management and the climate, and this is something every EU member state has to do, and the state energy concept. Regarding the state energy concept, I would like to highlight that the latest update stems from 2015, and you can imagine the level of technology and development and the price developments we have seen since this year. And I would particularly like to focus on this concept. But this concept is to be updated this year, and the draft has already been published. It provides up the basis, the fundamentals. And here I would like to share with you a summary of the most important items. But most of you <laughs> will uh, be able to read the uh, Czech or understand Czech, but nevertheless, I would like to read it out. So there's the call uh, condition uh, requirement that 90% of electricity requirement uh, is uh, to make sure that energy coverage is 90%. So 90% of domestic consumption needs to be from sources located in the Czech Republic. Well, the aim is to achieve um, roughly 50% share of nuclear electricity generation by 2050. Well, in the Czech Republic, we had uranium, we mined it, and um, enrichment of a fissile material was not performed in the Czech Republic. So the question is in how far are we actually independent when it comes to energy production? And then, as I have already referred to, um, uh, the 50% share of nuclear electricity in the energy and electricity mix is to be achieved by 2050. So we've heard 56%, and 56% is quite a number. So only France uh, has a higher share of nuclear power in electricity generation. Currently, it is 36% the share of nuclear energy in the uh, energy mix. So what does that mean? That we uh, will um, obviously seek to increase uh, the share of nuclear energy and the clan and the generators um, are th three gen of the third generation generators. And um, the concept already refers to, to the potential of small and medium-sized uh, modular reactors. And what is highlighted is that the ground has to be uh, prepared for the first SMR project to be launched in the Czech Republic in the 1930s. And originally, the scenario was uh, that primary uh, nuclear energy had to be prepared. And uh, based on uh, the 
debate and on pressure exercised by experts, a scenario will be included. And this is the scenario of the further development of renewable sources of energies. And this is not uh, well, uh, the only solution uh, to achieve an energy mix uh, that uh, does not uh, generate any greenhouse gases in the Czech Republic. So here are some quotes uh, from Czech government members uh, and a seminar, energy uh, safety in the context of uh, the Russian aggression war in Ukraine and what is the impact on our energy generation on our energy supply. And our Minister of Trade and Industry said our interest is to be part of the nuclear renaissance in the world, to become one of the nuclear powers. And actually, in the past, the Czech Republic was leading when it came to nuclear research and nuclear development. Um, and um, well, around the world, um, others have overtaken the Czech Republic and we now are lagging behind. So he also alludes to people's feeling of pride. And the first SMR is uh, to be opened on a current facility, a nuclear generation facility. And his deputy minister of industry said, well, other sites for small modular reluctance could uh, be, for instance, brownfield sites or former coal fire uh, power plants. So, well, what are the plans of the current Czech government? Several things come to play here. And based on surveys, more than half of uh, the Czech think um, that the nuclear share of uh, the energy mix is to be increased in contrast to the past uh, support for nuclear power generation has increased in the Czech Republic and based on uh, this survey this is the response of the population to the energy crisis and to um, the highly unreliable energy supply attributable to the Russian border of aggression in Ukraine. And this is the outcome of this survey. Here you see the development since 2012. The blue element means that the share of nuclear energy has to be increased. And this is what you see, the development. Last year, 56% of the population has expressed itself in favor of nuclear electricity, nuclear power. So. People support the idea of nuclear energy and, uh, well, the government politics reacts accordingly. And the question is, what about the support for renewable uh, sources of energy? Well, uh, the uh, population is uh, more in favor of uh, renewable sources of energy, but politics, however, focuses on nuclear power. And this is attributable to um, the, um, so to speak, successful lobbyism in favor of nuclear energy. So the nuclear lobby is succeeded on focusing on both energy, uh, reliable energy uh, supply and climate protection. So lots of those nuclear lobbies claim that nuclear energy is the only approach to ensuring that greenhouse gas emissions can be reduced in the Czech Republic. And the situation becomes even worse looking at the media response and the media response particularly to SMR and the view shared by the media. So the people at large find it different, uh, find it difficult, excuse me, to distinguish between uh, the phases of uh, development and design of SMRs. And due to media coverage, people believe that SMRs are ready for operation, uh, that they are fully developed. And this is what I often hear in debates when we speak about 
wind power plants and uh, they ask me why do we have to focus on on windmills if the SMRs are already here um, functional but the thing is that we do not have them yet and will not have them for quite some time so this is a bit of a distorted view uh, people have due to media coverage and this brings me to the chess program so summarizing uh, the main features uh, the chess company is one of the largest uh, companies in the Czech Republic based on sales and turns over it ranks third or fourth and 69% um, uh, is uh, held by the Czech state and is the largest electricity producer in the Czech Republic and at the same time it is the operator of the existing nuclear power plants in Dukovani and in Temelin. And why uh, do they want to develop SMRs? This is a question. Well, there are limits in terms of the classic generators. And what they say here that uh, renewable sources of energy cannot uh, be uh, developed to a level that uh, the increased energy demand can be met. So their line of arguing is that until 2050, including the third block of uh, fifth block of Dukovani, these are the small modular reactors. That these SMRs will uh, then uh, cover um, the um, demand. So this gap you see here in terms of uh, renewable energy production, renewable sources of energy, and energy demand. So what do they say? What does Chess say? They want to create a powerful regional research center. And this is the South Bohemian power plant I referred to, a regional production center for critical primary and secondary circuit components is to be developed and restoring strong competence when it comes to building and construction nuclear power plants in the Czech Republic. And then, then um, well, uh, the role it needs to play in the global and regional supply chain, operational excellence, including providing operational support for other investors in the region, then creating a training center in the region and rebuilding uh, uh, strong um, capabilities in terms of um, knowledge on the energy system, teaching, education, and then creating a service center for the region. In the morning, we heard uh, about development in the nuclear energy, but uh, the chess company remains conservative because they only want to focus on light water reactors some high temperature reactors or um, the molten salt reactors, fast reactors will not play a role under the chess program. So who will supply the light water reactors? Well, we do not know and chess doesn't know either. However, there is a list of potential suppliers and this is an alphabet. So this is a non-prioritized uh, list. This is just in alphabetic order. Well, what you see here is the designs uh, they consider. Here we have the new scale that has already been referred to. And in terms of licensing, this is actually a, progress, a project that has already progressed quite far. And there are projects, as mentioned, in, from the US, further US programs then from France, South Korea, and the UK. And here you see the performance and how these uh, reactors are to be realized on the sites. And this list, as mentioned before, is uh, just uh, given in alphabetic order. But it is to be expected that in the future, 
it will be important where these reactors are located and how they can be connected to supply. And this is uh, based on what Chess has said. So what about the milestones from the Czech's point of view in terms of uh, realization and licensing? Here you see the individual concept here. This is the planned uh, deadline uh, for the first of a kind uh, reactor. Uh, and then uh, the planned uh, commissioning of the first of a kind, and one is planned, and the others is um, actually the reality. I personally do not expect that one of these uh, reactors can uh, be made operational by the end of uh, this decade. We will see uh, how developments continue if somebody succeeds um, in achieving these milestones in the first half of the 2030s. So where are these reactors to be built? I mentioned the South Bohemia nuclear park, but the sites, we considered more than 20 sites uh, as potential locations. Now the list has uh, become shorter, and this is where you can see the current uh, status. Um, anticipated locations uh, might include Demelin with the um, existing um, nuclear power plant, Dushimitsa, Brunorov, Kidney, Borisji, Marotrich, Dukovan. This is um, in a coal mining region. Um, um, where mines are still being run, and then um, there could be a, a, a cogeneration plant uh, in uh, um, Osrava. Dukovani was actually added, um, um, and uh, an SMR can only uh, be um, commissioned after blocks one to four have been shut down, which uh, should be uh, up to uh, should take up to 2035, but uh, there are also applications for an extension of uh, the operating period. So uh, we can expect Dukovani to be operational until 2045. So it's going to be the last uh, um, power plant. Uh, to be replaced um, at the end of the 2040s. What is now the difference between the uh, um, sites where there are nuclear power plants? There, uh, Chess can use the results from uh, um, uh, geological um, investigations and uh, other previous investigations. And there are also um, options um, um, for a cool, cooling water supply and um, transmission lines for the power grid. Um, Jez is, of course, using um, the smallest resistance uh, and um, would like to start in Dukovani. So technology is supposed to be um, tested there, and this uh, should become the uh, um, the uh, um, basis for the future uh, center. The uh, um, sites where um, coal-powered plants are being run at the moment, no nuclear power plants, um, are also subject to a certain logic. To thinking that uh, a third-generation reactor um, uh, um, may produce an output of uh, more than 3,000 uh, uh, um, megawatts um, in um, electricity, electrical output uh, um, um, compared to uh, coal-powered plants. Uh, um, it does make sense to use higher output plants uh, instead of coal-powered plants, uh, coal-fired plants, uh, whilst one is able to use uh, um, the uh, existing connections to the uh, road system, to uh, uh, cooling water, access to cooling water, etc. So you can actually uh, figure out where the problems could lie. Um, 
wherever um, nuclear power plants um, have been run so far, um, nuclear sites, uh, um, the um, um, existing structures can be used and the existing uh, results of um, um, explorations can be used. Tushimitsa is a non-nuclear site. It seems to be the most suitable compared to other sites. In others, uh, um, there are potential risks and further research will be required. In Pozhichi, um, there is a high degree of probability because of um, the uh, ground structure, of the geological structure that it is unsuitable for an SMR location. This is now the program. The uh, green part on the left is a summary of activities at Demelin. The feasibility study uh, has been completed. The uh, business uh, plan has been uh, has been approved. Um, geological and uh, hydrogeological um, inquiry um, research has been completed. The uh, um, environmental uh, impact assessment uh, is to be completed this year, and the licensing procedure is to be opened this year. Uh, then the uh, selection is also being opened um, um, soon, and um, the uh, plant um, is planned to be commissioned in 2032, which is quite ambitious. On the right-hand side, you can see um, these non-nuclear sites um, where the uh, geological uh, foundation is being um, explored and um, the target date has now been uh, um, shifted. Um, uh, the uh, SMR blocks uh, are to be commissioned in 2035. The question has also been raised um, what uh, the uh, status, uh, the technological uh, status of uh, um, SMR projects um, are, both uh, in the industry and in other institutions. As regards uh, um, the beginning of development, uh, we might assume that it was in 2015. Um, it was um, started off by Energy World Project, which is a subsidiary of Virtus. Um, it um, is um, a, an MSR, um, which has been under development since then. and. Um, being developed by Zhezh, um, it uh, has a planned output of uh, eight uh, uh, megawatt equivalents. Uh, it's an MSR with three circuits uh, um, using salt uh, in two and CO2 in one. Um, in practice, uh, um, the question for the output uh, begs the question as to uh, whether this is really realistic uh, um, um, or whether this um, is more geared to uh, getting funding for other projects. Uh, um, you can also read up the details at uh, energyworld.cz. Uh, here you can see the two cooling circuits. It's a reactor that is uh, sunk. And uh, the question is really whether uh, it is going to uh, uh, produce realistic results and whether it's not just research um, for the sake of research. This is another project, Hefasto, a fast gas cooled reactor um, with development started in 2021. Um, again, a project uh, of um, Zhezh. Um, 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 it, with uh, um, similar targets uh, um, as in the previous project here's the uh, uh, visualization it's uh, more similar to a classic power plant 
uh, a generation three or a generation four power plant. Uh, Here's the timeline. It is expected that a strategic partner will join and that um, design should be finalized by 2025. Licensing um, should be completed by 2040. So research is underway. Money is being funneled into it. Uh, but uh, the outcome uh, comes with a big question mark. The next project. Uh, 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 developed by the Nuclear Institute uh, in Zhezh is a conventional reactor. It's a light water reactor. It's planned to be used in uh, um, electricity generation, but also in thermal for use in thermal mode, either 30 megawatt um, output uh, in condensing mode or um, 9 megawatt uh, um, of electricity and 72 uh, megawatt um, of heat. Um, the project has been underway since 2021. Uh, here's a visualization. It's always good to look at this, uh, if I may note that. Um, 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 often enough, uh, a designer or an architect is uh, being brought on board uh, to design um, something that um, this is uh, distinct and different from the box-like previous reactors, just to show um, that this is uh, pleasant to look at and it's something different than previous generations. So if the uh, content is basically the same, at least the out um, the outward appearance is different, and this has an impact on um, the public. Here's the uh, next uh, project. It's not being developed by the Nuclear Institute uh, in Zhezh, but the Bitkovitz Group. It's a light water reactor uh, which is being developed, uh, has been developed since 2018. The planned output is um, 50 megawatts of electricity, 175 megawatt tons of um, heat. It's a conventional uh, reactor, and according to the timeline, um, the uh, discussion on the licensing conditions uh, are to start next year. But again, um, the question arises, uh, what it will be like. Um, what we hear is that uh, um, governmental funding um, will be requested uh, so that research can be continued. The Blator is a heavy water reactor, yet another project, uh, um, um, the same uh, concept as the Kanu reactors, uh, but not to be used for um, electricity generation. It's um, um, it's uh, a, a thermal power plant to generate heat, uh, but that's not the most interesting point about it. Uh, it um, is to use um, uh, spent uh, um, fuel rods uh, of the uh, WW uh, uh, type, uh, and uh, this is an attempt at uh, using residual heat and at recycling um, the uh, spent uh, fuel rods uh, um, according um, to the research that it can uh, produce up to 150 uh, megawatt tons of heat. Uh, um, can you imagine what it would look like uh, in practice if uh, this plant were located in a city? Uh, or a town with several thousand inhabitants and uh, actually um, the spent fuel rods were to be taken to that city uh, to run this reactor. This is the reason why the Czech regulators is very skeptical about this uh, concept, but it doesn't really bother uh, the developers. They are actually uh, 
actually continuing development, and this is a visualization. Um, they um, actually present what they call a solution as to uh, um, as to how the uh, circular economy can be supported by um, using uh, the uh, uh, spent fuel rods from uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, um, Phoenix is the next project um, in the Czech industry. It's not um, um, purely Czech um, initiative. Um, it's uh, based on a U.S. initiative uh, for Central and Eastern Europe aiming to rebuild coal-fired plants by using SMR technology. At the moment, they're looking for partners who could get involved in this uh, project. Uh, so they're looking for um, industrial um, suppliers who could support the uh, project. Uh, um, based um, on the idea that the United States are concerned about uh, um, about um, CO2 emissions in Central and Eastern Europe. I'm not going to comment on that. So, as I uh, mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the question um, that arises is uh, to what extent uh, current trends are taking a into account in strategic documents. Uh, um, SMRs um, are very dominant, uh, even though they don't exist in the real world, and uh, um, yet they actually uh, stand out uh, in um, strategic documents. Uh, um, it's um, also a question of uh, um, um, of um, uh, other alternatives uh, um, because SMRs do not exist while uh, electrolyzers uh, to uh, produce hydrogen will be available at the end of the decade. Uh, so uh, it would make sense to um, focus on that rather than SMRs. Um, the second question that arises is uh, the replacement placement um, uh, of existing coal-fired uh, plants, plants uh, um, by 2030. That's the plan of the Czech government. But how is that going to happen if 2032 will be the year when the first SMR can be commissioned? Uh, um, actually, uh, um, while this is being focused on, the uh, development of renewable sources is uh, actually stagnating, which will probably lead to coal-fired power plants being used past that uh, time horizon. Um, they uh, make up 40% uh, of uh, um, Forty percent of uh, CO2 emissions in the Czech Republic, so uh, it would make sense to get rid of them um, sooner rather than later. But SMRs will not make this happen. Nevertheless, they are a priority in the strategic documents. Uh, the next important question concerns uh, um, the economic viability uh, of SMR operations and systems where there is a high share of a renewable uh, energy sources. Um, calculations uh, for the price of uh, energy gener um, electricity generated uh, by SMRs uh, um, show that uh, it's expensive energy and uh, um, actually a uh, high utilization coefficient is reckoned with uh, um, due to the high investment costs. Uh, um, um, high efficiency is expected um, to make up for that part. Uh, um, if uh, uh, renewable uh, energy resources uh, should not see a competition in SMRs, uh, these should be a very high output uh, system. Um, at the same time, uh, there is also uh, the issue of economic externalities, of economic impacts. Uh, uh, and that has to do with highly radioactive waste. Uh, SMRs uh, 
will probably produce uh, much more radioactive uh, uh, material waste uh, than um, existing nuclear power plants. Uh, so um, this has a bearing on um, the uh, uh, planning for um, for the uh, waste uh, deposit sites, and uh, uh, it is clear that um, we will not have enough uh, sites uh, to bury our nuclear waste. Um, the uh, last question is, um, to what extent uh, domestic SMR projects are competitive? Uh, these concepts are all based on uh, um, uh, reducing the price um, once uh, uh, these SMRs can be, or their component can be produced uh, in series, um, so in a high uh, number of uh, units. Uh, uh, Chess is uh, actually uh, looking at seven potential suppliers. They are closer to uh, uh, making uh, SMRs materialize. The situation will be similar as in classical reactors. Uh, there will only be a few global producers uh, which um, can uh, produce the uh, successful designs uh, that uh, uh, go past um, uh, licensing and actually can be produced in series. Uh, uh, the question arises uh, how efficiently funds are being used in research and development in this area. Because if we develop five concepts, five designs, um, which uh, are not sure to be uh, um, translated into reality, um, it becomes problematic. So much uh, from my side. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to any questions you might have. Ulrich Sklenasch. Ulrich, Ulrich Sklenasch. Thank you so much uh, for your great presentation. Uh, we're looking at these colorful pictures and listening to what you say. You really see that these bubbles are exploding. This uh, design, yeah, this design really explodes, although Anna has presented most beautiful pictures. But well, they're just bubbles. I would suggest that we uh, focus on questions at the final panel since uh, we have already uh, passed the time. So, a warm hand for Ulrich Kermitsch.